guys, it's Shelby, otherwise known as Shelbizzle here on YouTube, and today we're going to talk about something that's not so fun, but it is really important. We're going to talk about one of the top three industries that pollutes our environment and how you are contributing to it all the time by voting with your dollar, and in the end we'll talk a little bit more about how you can do something to make a change. So this industry we're going to talk about actually does depend heavily on us to keep it going. It's not something that's a necessity. It's not something that helps our modern society like work in a more efficient way. No, it's literally just to feed our greed. Each time we spend money on a new fast fashion item, we are telling that company that we support their heinous activities. And so my goal for this video is to tell you why you should stop supporting these industries and stop supporting something that is known as fast fashion, which basically just means stop supporting these brands that do really bad things so that they can sell you clothes at a really cheap price for a really shitty quality. This video is going to be similar to my video where I talked about the environmental impacts of makeup. If you haven't seen that, totally go check it out once this is over but I started in that video with the ingredients which is kind of where you need to start to understand the supply chain and what all goes into making the products that we buy that are so harmful so let's start with the two main materials that go into these fast fashion brands and that's going to be cotton and polyester so let's just start with where cotton comes from if you didn't know cotton is a crop I think a lot of people know that but just in case you didn't cotton is one of the most resource intensive crops and what do I mean by that I mean that it requires a lot of water a lot of pesticides a lot of fossil fuels to derive from the earth I think a lot of people have heard of this term called the carbon footprint but maybe not so many people talk about the water Footprint. What I mean by water footprint is how much water it takes to turn that cotton into a t-shirt. So each t-shirt that you wear, studies have found that it takes upwards from 2,700 liters to 20,000 liters of water to produce a single cotton t-shirt. That number in and of itself is insane when you think about the fact that only 1% of the water on earth is available for human consumption. But aside from that, that number seems huge for one one t-shirt, multiply that by how many t-shirts you have, and then multiply that by how many people there are, not just in your country, in the world. Now I hope to you that seems ridiculous. I hope to you that seems like a huge number for something that is not necessary. Let me rephrase that. Of course we need clothes to live, but we don't need an excess amount of clothes to live. Did you know that the average American throws out between 68 and 100 pounds of clothing each year and that's not taking into consideration how much of it is donated that's just how much goes into the landfill so that's a pretty big water footprint a lot of fresh water that's being used up for your clothes right well that is true whether your shirt is made with regular cotton conventional cotton where pesticides and things like that are used or if it's organic cotton. Both of those things are harmful to the environment because they use up so much unnecessary water. But you can save yourself a little bit of bad feelings if you go with organic cotton. That's because as I said, cotton is the one of the most resource intensive crops. It takes a lot of pesticides, herbicides, and things like that to create it to grow it. So these cotton farmers deforest the land, strip the land of whatever its natural habitat is, and then to keep the things that belong there out, the things that are native to that land, they put all these chemicals and things on it to kill off the bugs and the plants and so on and so forth. But the problem doesn't just come from the ecosystems that were originally on that farmland, it also comes from the fact that a lot of these crops are overwatered. So the water that gets put onto the crop often runs off. Not only that, but sometimes it rains and then you get runoff. So those pesticides and those all those harmful chemicals get into the waterways and then it runs off into our streams, lakes, rivers, oceans, all those sort of things. And then it doesn't only impact the things that live in that water, but anything that relies on that water to live. So the animals in the area and a lot of times humans as well. Modern farming is something totally different than it used to be way back in the day. Used to, there weren't so many pesticides and it also was very dependent on slave labor. Slaves used to pick the cotton, that's something that they were enslaved to do back in the day. Ever since we've moved into more modern times, we have moved towards more industrial ways of farming, so that means that now it's not dependent on human labor, it's instead dependent on fossil fuels, and so farming these cotton crops requires a lot of fuel because that's how they pick it now, with huge tractors, and we're not just talking about one plot of land, we're talking about thousands and thousands of acres of land to meet the demand that is created by the consumer you and me 
for all of these cotton shirts. From what I've seen, studies show that it is estimated for each cotton shirt, it takes somewhere around 80 gallons of gasoline to produce. Now, switching over from petroleum, we'll talk about polyester. So I personally have a shirt that's made from recycled ocean plastic, and it has a saying on the front that says all these different things about how we're harming the oceans and things like that, and it never fails that when I wear it, someone asks me what it means and what it says. I don't always like to sit there and let them read my shirt for a minute or however long it's going to take, so I just summarize it and say, this shirt is made by a brand that uses recycled ocean plastic to make this shirt. And every single time I tell someone that, they're astonished that my shirt could be made from plastic. But the truth is that most of the clothes you wear are made from plastic. Polyester is a form of plastic. Now the way polyester is derived and manufactured is a huge process, very, very energy intensive, and honestly kind of confusing to understand. But to summarize it in the best way possible, polyester is a plastic that is derived from something called ethylene, which is derived from something Thing called petroleum and we all know where petroleum comes from and we all know how environmentally degradating that is. So aside from where these shirts come from and the materials they're made out of, let's go ahead to the manufacturing process where whether it's organic cotton, regular cotton, or polyester, it is most likely going to be bleached and dyed. But those processes do not often take place in the United States or in the Western world in general. It takes place in a lot of places like Bangladesh, India, China, things like that. For these bleaching and dyeing processes to take place, they need a lot of water. It requires a lot of water to mix the ingredients and to soak the material so it will be ready to take up these dyes and bleaches and things like that. What makes this really unfortunate is that a lot of times the water in these communities is prioritized for the fast fashion industry and not prioritized for citizens. So what that means is clean water often goes to these chemical plants or the manufacturing plants that are making our clothes as opposed to clean water going to the people in the community who need it to live. So on top of their water being reprioritized for something that we are demanding by purchasing these things, it's also a lot of water that goes into it. So the fresh water that goes in and is contaminated with bleaches and dyes oftentimes gets discharged back into their waterways without being treated. So that means all of these harmful chemicals are impacting the water ecosystem, the animals who depend on it, and the humans who depend on it, giving them much higher rates of infection, disease, cancers. It's a very sad thing that's happening not just to the environment but also to the people of these places who are being exploited so we can have the next cool trendy t-shirt. In fact, each year 56 billion liters of water is released back into the streams without being treated at all. So I think that explains that not only is that a lot of water that is wasted but it also comes with a lot of harmful impacts to the people who depend on that water to live. So this is just a very small snippet of some of the things that happen during this process. And it can be a lot to take in and a lot to understand and I hope that it's left a lasting impact on you and wondering what can I do so that I don't contribute to these horrible practices. Well, I'm going to tell you, but before we get there, I want you guys to know, according to a research done of 2,000 women, after only 7 wears, each person is ready to get rid of that garment. That means that maybe you go to a store and it's trendy right now, right? Like some of the things that are trendy right now are the off the shoulder tops and there are so many different colors, patterns, different um, half off the shoulders, this and that, and all these crazy things that these stores make you think that you need, but chances are you'll probably only wear it a few times before you decide you're done with it and you don't want to wear it anymore. That's how the fast fashion industry gets you. They make you think that each week you need something new. You know, used to there were only two seasons. There was a warm season and there was a cold season. And there were two different times that you needed different fashion pieces. That was a more sustainable time. But this... This is not sustainable. These big fast fashion companies introduce hundreds of new items to their websites every week, making you think that what you bought last week is no longer in style, you need the new thing that's out this week. And they market it to you as if it's going to solve your problems, as if it's going to make you feel more beautiful, more confident, and more in style, make you feel like you fit in more. But the truth is that these companies are not trying to help you feel more beautiful or help you feel confident. Their goal is actually to make you feel the exact opposite so that you feel like you need to buy more of their stuff to feel beautiful. Hundreds of millions of dollars are dumped into marketing campaigns for you and me so that we feel like we need to go buy their stuff to feel like we fit in in our society. And that's just not true. I think the number one thing that needs to happen in our society to help the environment and also to help our overall happiness is we need to realize that we are valuable outside of what we wear and what we own and what we don't own 
phone and how expensive our stuff is or if it's on trend. You've got to change your mentality from what you've been programmed by all these ad campaigns to think makes you important and makes you cool. So what's the solution? Other than just being confident in yourself and not buying into all these ads just to make these really rich people more rich. What's the solution? Well, as an environmentalist, I always refer back to the three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. The number one thing you can do in this situation is to reduce the amount of clothes you buy. What I would say is to, yes, try to find the confidence in yourself to understand what makes you feel beautiful. Maybe there are certain colors or certain styles that make you feel beautiful, but next week that new style that comes out, it's not going to make you feel beautiful. It's just going to make you feel like you fit in with what they think you should fit in with. So find your personal style and reduce your wardrobe down to those items. This is honestly something that I struggle with because some of you may know back in high school I never wore the same outfit twice I was voted best dressed because of it um, and looking back now how ignorant I was and it wasn't my fault and it's none of y'all's fault that you don't know these things that are happening that's not what's marketed to you it's marketed to you to buy more stuff but I will tell you it is still a challenge to me today to find my personal style so what I do instead of just depending on having a personal style I go to the second step which is reuse reuse as in try to get a lot of your wardrobe from secondhand shops from thrift shops charity shops garage sales things like that. I personally think that this is the best way to decrease your carbon and water footprint when it comes to clothing because you're purchasing something that would have otherwise been thrown out by someone else. There is also a third way you can be more sustainable in your clothing practices and that is look into the brands you're purchasing from. Do they use organic cotton? Are they made in the US where people are paid fair wages? You can look on places like Etsy to make you personal clothing out of recycled material. There are some apps you can use that I'll list in the description box below to see if the companies you are buying from are environmentally sustainable or not, so on and so forth. But that is usually going to be the key to living a more sustainable lifestyle. Do your research up front. Don't buy things from big box stores because I can almost guarantee you that 99% of the time those things were made by people in foreign countries who are paid horrible wages, they polluted the waterways, they used tons of pesticides and tons of fossil fuels to make that product and that is not something that you want to vote for with your dollar. Okay everyone, so that's it for me today. I hope this video inspires you to look more into the things that you're purchasing and the impacts they're having on the environment from the upstream causes as well as the downstream causes. Never toss a piece of clothing out before you try to donate it or resell it even. Get some money back off of the things that you bought yourself. I'd really like to end this video by saying please share it with your friends, your family, anyone who needs to hear it or anyone who you think doesn't already know this information. I would really appreciate it and that is how we make a difference. We we spread this kind of information it's going to be pretty concise to where the average person will be able to learn about these things and then we can all work together to make a big difference in the world so remember until next time create the peace